often on the news, we hear the terms occupied territories, 67 borders, and illegal settlements. And the story we usually hear sounds very simple. During the Six-Day War, Israel captured the West Bank from the Palestinians, refused the United Nations demand to retreat, and illegally built settlements. But is that really the case? Yes. Let's try to understand the situation a little bit better. We'll start with a simple but extremely important question. From whom did Israel capture the West Bank? From the Palestinians? Yeah. No. What? In 1967, there was no Arab nation or state by the name of Palestine. Actually, was there ever? Whoa, 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 hold the phone. Did it ever? Really? Shut the front door. I don't know what you're smoking, Danny, but I'd like to try some. Are you actually trying to tell me that I, as a Palestinian, do not exist? What are we, in the Matrix? You simply want to deny my ancestors and I ever existed? Listen, denial ain't just a river in Egypt, all right? Or will you deny that the pyramids exist too? How can you keep a straight face? Well, maybe Danny is an alien from outer space. That would actually make a lot of sense. So let's enlighten him as to the real truth about the West Bank. Ready? Palestine was the name used to describe the area between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River from as far back as 450 BC. In ancient Greece, Herodotus referred to the district of Syria called Palestine. And let's not forget Aristotle, who also used Palestine to refer to the same region. Officially, both the Roman and Byzantine empires referred to the area as Palestine. And that was BC before Christ, a man you may have heard of, born in Bethlehem, a city in Palestine. Oh, wait a minute. Does that make Jesus a Palestinian? Immediately after the seventh century, when Palestine became predominantly Arab, its Arabic name, Philistine, became known to the entire Arabic-speaking world and even appears in writings in the late 10th century. In 1516, Palestine became a province of the Ottoman Empire. The name continued to be documented throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, including in a scientific report such as Britain's Palestine Exploration Fund. And when the British occupied Palestine in 1922, they called it... Oh, what was that name again? Oh yeah, the British Mandate of Palestine, you schmuck. If that's not enough, why don't we take a look at the birth certificate of... The former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, who holds a State of Palestine birth certificate as he was born where? In Palestine, Biatch, prior to the creation of the State of Israel. So Danny, sorry to break it to you, but the old colonialist slogan used by Zionists of a land without a people for a people without a land only existed in the dreams of Zionists. Palestine existed and Palestinians, yes a people, lived in it. That is, until Zionists expelled and forcibly displaced Palestinians and created Israel. So nice lie, Danny. I mean, try. Nice try. What else have you got? Israel took over the West Bank from Jordan in an act of self-defense, after Jordan joined a war launched by Egypt and Syria to destroy Israel. I got this. Danny, 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 trying to rewrite history is not very nice. Didn't your mummy teach you any better? That same war you're talking about was actually started by an Israeli strike on Egypt in 1967, which means it was Israel who attacked. Don't you believe me? Why don't we quote Menachem Begin, Israel's prime minister at the time, who said, In June 1967, we again had a choice. The Egyptian army concentrations in the Sinai approaches do not prove that Nasser was really about to attack us. We must be honest with ourselves. We decided to attack him. And to quote you, Danny. Oh, by the way, destroying countries is rather illegal. You want to know what my source was for the Menachem Begin quote? The Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs website. The ministry that pays your salary, Danny. The Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs also paid for your propaganda video. And, by the way, there are plenty more facts like these. You know, I could go on and on and on. 
But before we go, we'd like to mention one last thing. We are Arabs of all religions. Your depictions of Arabs and Muslims as gun-toting fanatics firing shots into the air, hell-bent on destroying Israel, or stupidly sitting smoking water pipes, are racist stereotypes that serve only to vilify and dehumanize Arabs and Muslims. Not too long ago in Europe, Jews were depicted as evil creatures with long noses conspiring to take over the world. Such anti-Semitic caricatures were used to dehumanize and vilify Jews. We all know what happened then. So the stereotypes perpetuated by you and the government of Israel are unacceptable and morally reprehensible. And as you put it, Danny... They're simply not politically correct.